Good evening, everybody. How's everybody doing this evening, this fine Thursday evening? It's uh, raining here in Donegal. Nothing unusual about that. Hope everyone's keeping well and uh, keeping up with all their modeling. So let's get over and see who's in the chat. I'll put the camera back down on the track so you don't want to be looking at my ugly mug all evening. And try and put that between the tracks and just see if it uh, fits between the trains. So we'll see now if that gets knocked as the trains go around next time. So who we got in the chat? Flymo Chamber One, good evening. Brian Madden, hi Brian, how's it going? Wolfsack Scenic PW, good evening. Tom Houston, Model Rail, Martin O'Keefe. Uh, oh, Clive Cobalt, good evening, Clive. Hope you're keeping well. Leslie Gilpin Railways, hi Leslie, how you doing? Peter Jackson, Cheadle Heath, good evening, Peter. Oh, no, it doesn't fit. Oh, and I've had a derailment and everything. Let's move that around. And we'll sort that out in a sec. Uh, back to the chat. Peter Jackson. Simon Trains. Good evening, sir. How are you doing? Anthony Dodge. How are you doing, Anthony? Alan White. Good evening. h and Express Model Trains. How are you doing? Hi. How are you keeping? Joshua W56 Gaming. Hi, Joshua. Everyone's on. Good evening. And hi to anyone else who I've missed in the chat. Jonathan McDade. Well, hello. How are you doing? How's all down in Galway? You know, I've had the trains running for the last 20 minutes or so before I came on stream. And as usual, you switch on the camera and everything goes to pop. So let's sort out this little derailment over here. And I'll get back into the chat. Oh, that's bad news. Anthony, new train, custom made and blew the decoder. That's not good. Oh, Graham Lemonson Station's in the house. How you doing, Graham? Hermitage Road's also in the house. How you doing? Everything wants to misbehave tonight. I think I'm just going to be having one of those days. Having such a great live stream last week, this one there. Uh, it's going downhill rapidly. Let's see how that goes now. There we go. We've got a new double O gauge wagon on the way, maybe, Simon. Anything interesting? Yeah, as Leslie says, that little puff of blue smoke that you see. Yeah. Pennant sure reopening of a line to Bantry. Ah. They were supposed to be here in Ireland publishing the All Island Rail Review today. It came out in a draft form last year, but it was supposed to be the final draft, supposed to be published today. I haven't seen it yet. Oh, Karen J94, good evening. Trevor Veal's in the house as well. How are you doing, Trevor? And uh, of course, hi to anybody I've missed in the chat. But I hope you're all keeping well. So, same old trains running tonight. Um, 
46 and a 37 running. And 37 and a 57 running on the other layer. We should also focus station in Wicklow. Well, there was a report so they're going to build a new international uh, airport down there. I think it's a bit far fetched. I think it's probably just going to be another uh, housing estate. Little uh, video out tomorrow on a uh, three rail railway I was working on the other day, cleaning up. Anybody who's on the Heritage uh, Museum, the museum's uh, Facebook page has seen it, and of course, Montana members have seen the video already. Old Hornby Triang Meccano Double O Three Rail Railway. Chris Valley 56, good evening, sir. All present XD locomotive sheds in the house as well. Good evening. And Leslie's been to Alice Clark and bought himself a little loco. What did you get? Oh, Howard Promfrey's in. How are you doing, Howard? Yeah, I did see the um, the Killybegs layout, Peter. I actually shared it on the Denigal Dad Facebook page and the Denigal Railways and the Denigal Model Railway Club. Actually, I uh, know Chris. He was actually a past, as he says in the video, past chairman of uh, our society. N scale Southern Pacific. Ooh, very nice. Triang was always too real. Yeah, well, this is obviously it's a collection, so they've got some Triang um, wagons and stuff like that, and some stuff has been converted to three rail because he's got actually some modern stuff that came in a box saying it's DCC ready but he's had it converted to three row. Are we up to tonight? We're having a chat and watching my usual trains run around and given those old wagons I got in Bangor there a couple of weeks back a test. Uh, a few of them, the back to backs need to be sorted out. Some of them have got our old triangles. So they've got the real thick wheels on them, which don't go over the points very well, so they'll have to have their wheels swapped out. Um, I've been doing some more work on the weekend on the rest of this layout, but um, that's slow going, so I'm only able to grab an hour here and there to do any work on it. <laughs> Just seen the photos from the Denigal Railway Heritage page and saw you with a grin on your face. Well, what do you expect? I spent a whole day there um, to get it going again. It really, it just needed a, a good clean, which took about six hours to clean all the track and the locos, and that was two of us at it. And then um, we couldn't get it to run. It kept shortening, kept, and you know, we were just, took us ages to figure out. And then we found out there was a, a live section that should have been off and it was on and there was a loco sitting on there that wasn't right. And that kept shorting it out. And there was also a clockwork loco sitting on there, which wasn't helping either. That was also shorting it out. Hi, Ray Bernstein. That's fine. Yeah. Just watch away and listen. I'll try not to bore you too much. <laughs> yeah, it was uh, It's a lovely layout. Um, Say so it's got all the old stuff on it. Uh, no scenics on it, but I think that's part of the charm of it, that it's it's just old school. Uh, tonight I'm drinking water tonight for a change. Good old Denigal tap water. I 
No, Simon, I didn't go to clockwork. It was, uh, it was actually sitting in one of the engine sheds at the back, so we didn't see it at first. And we lifted up the engine shed and thought, oh, there's this, what's this? And then took it up and go, it's got no engine. Oh, it's clockwork. Oh, that won't be doing any good. Yeah, and there was another one, uh, I think it was a class 20, was it, that was sitting there? And it was, it was unwell and it was shorting everything out, but we fixed that. We got... Right, got a little derailment I'll just sort out, so. As usual, you know, always derails somewhere where it's not handy to get to. See if we can get that going again. Nope, something's still off the track. There we go. Catch back up with the chat again. Where was I? Uh, oh, Digger's in the house. Hi, Digger. Good evening. Hope you're giving well, sir. Oh, Carl's in the house as well. Hi, Carl. Lynn Tree, uh, town, a new double gauge model railway. Good evening. How are you doing, sir? Yeah, the second loco has stopped, and it stopped the furthest part of the layout where I have to climb over to get it. I just looked over and seen that. I thought, ah, that's very helpful. I think um, a bit of track must be dirty and need cleaning. So I'm going to uh, see if I can give that a nudge. Got a length of flexi track here. I can see if I can nudge it with. Yeah, it's just, I need to get in there and clean that point. It's obviously stopped on the point. Those are insole frog points on that. So I'll see the wheels on the loco need to clean because I should have all wheel pickup and give the, tra the uh, track a bit of a clean as well. Oh, Andy's in the house. Hi, Andy. How's it going? Head coach for the Peaks is appropriate. Houston to Hollyhead for the boat to Ireland. I didn't actually even know that was the head code for it. Of course, I should say, yeah, of course it is. Yeah, because, you know. Yeah, I think I need to, uh, of course, as soon as I finish the stream and I walk out of here tonight, I'll forget all about it. And it'll be next week when I switch them on again. That, uh, It'll stop in the same place again and be like, yeah, I got to clean that. 
Um, but what I did actually with that layout is I actually hooked it into this layout. So they're all running off the one controller now. So at least I can actually control those trains from here. Yeah, that's one thing I did on the uh, layout I was cleaning because um, I have to go back up there in a few months because I took a few locals away with me to service at home. Um, is I use some of that electrical contact cleaner. So I, I give them all a clean with the uh, Gauge Master track cleaner, which makes a hell of a mess, and then you vacuum up after it. But I got some Halfords contact cleaner, and I put that on the rail. So I want to see how that works, see if it does stop it from tarnishing as quickly. Because bearing in mind, all this track is sort of steel rails as well, and you have three rails to clean, the center rail and the two outer ones. You know very well, Carl. I see. Uh... Yeah, the uh, peak class. I, uh, it must be something on the CV settings or something, because coming up there, it goes really slowly. But as it comes around the curve, then it speeds up on the other side of the layout and then slows down again. And it's the only loco that does that. So maybe I'll just give it a little bit more juice. Oh, Clive, you had your new 10 car ATP running on your new layout the weekend. Oh, lovely. Love to see that. If you ever want to send me in some pictures, Clive, um, I can I can share them on here to everyone. A few liters. Yeah, there was a bit of IPA used and surgical spirits and all sorts clean that track and a lot of elbow grease. My hands were actually black by the end of it. There was just so much because I don't think it had stopped working on them about three years ago. And of course, it just hadn't been touched since then. Um, and we got it going for him. So I think he's happy that it's, it's up and running again. My experience ATF works quite well, but that's on nickel silver tracks. Yeah, it'd be interesting now to see how it works on the steel tracks. Oh, you're in hospital, are you, Carl? I hope you get well soon, mate. Wexford show was on the Sunday and Monday of the bank holiday weekend. Yeah, I was going to see if I could actually do a day trip down there. I mean, it's a long way for me. It's about probably about a five-hour drive here from Donegal down there to see the show and then a five-hour drive back up again. But we'll see. Well, it depends on weather and everything. Yeah, the, if you're on about Leslie, the local that's going around the green on it is a 46. No, it's not catching on the platform. It's just when it comes, the side that's coming up on now, uh, coming out of the tunnel, it goes really slow around there. And then when it start, comes around the other side, it speeds up. And I don't know why. It may be just the track is dirty over that side and needs a clean. Because to be honest, it's the side that I can't get to easily, so it probably doesn't get cleaned that often. Um, it's... It's a radius two curve, I think, on there. So it should be okay. 
I know a lot of these things say okay for second radius, but yeah, they there is like four wheels on each bogey. Who's put it? Anyone else getting a frozen picture? So Peter's saying he's got. Yeah, the Meccano controllers, they were rubber, uh, rubber insulated power cables on them. Could it be that the class 46 is slowing down to take a peek at the station? <laughs> oh, Simon. <laughs> Eight wheel bogey seen a bit more radius, yeah. But it's the straight bit it slows down on. So it's not even the curve it slows down on. I probably do need to pull that out, get behind it and give it a good clean. So I'll try and get that done over the weekend. Uh, although I have family commitments this weekend, so there won't be done, much done on the model railway this weekend. Yeah, I'm happy with the, the controller, Alan. It works really well. Um, like, it's great. Like, uh, one of the uh, locos went, came off on a point earlier on, and I just had to put it right, and it carried on, whereas with the Railmaster system, you have to reset everything, and it's... Whereas this, if it hits a short, it clears it, and it goes on its merry way, so... So if uh, anybody's got any questions, pop them in the chat. And if I've missed the question, put it back in again. And hi to anybody who's lurking in the background there. And anybody who's new to the stream, any questions, pop them in the chat there. And don't forget to hit the old like button for me and subscribe if you're new here. It all helps. Um, any of you see my post for my other channel that I put up? that to hop off. Is that the cooking one? Yeah, it is a cooking one. It's, and it's the one, um, I'm surprised one of the videos on there, um, I done on roast potatoes, has got, I think, almost 6,000 views on it. And it's only been up a couple of weeks. I've never had that on any of my videos on this channel. <laughs> uh, I got my first sort of semi-nasty comment on it. Which I, I thought it was quite funny. It was uh, somebody put a comment on there saying, if you, <laughs> if you use less oil and butter, you might lose some weight. <laughs> which I find really funny. Uh, 
All right, the uh, 37's hopped off the tracks for some reason. There we go, back on the tracks. Well, the peak is running a bit faster than the 37. Oh, you'll be getting your locus after, after 12 years. If they've been stored away in boxes, I'm sure they'll be fine. Wheels might need a bit of a clean, but I'm sure they'll be up and running in no time. No, I haven't seen it. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was quite funny, Digger. And then somebody did actually come to my fence and go, that's not very nice. If you've nothing nice to say, then don't say anything at all. But, you know, you have to have a bit of a thick skin with YouTube. Which I don't know if anybody's seen um, Graham Faustin's uh, Lakeside's last video. He's having a bit of a tough time at the moment. I think all that's going on in his personal life and everything is just getting to him. And I did send him a message wishing him well. So the off chance that you're listening, Graham, look after yourself, buddy. And I'm always here if you need a chat. But I'm sure he'll bounce back. Yeah, I know um, Alan Dragon Junction had a rough time as well. And it's just, but it, like I say, with your mental health, 99% of the time you get a comment, you brush it off. But there's that time when you're feeling a bit low, other things are going on in your life. And you see a comment and you just think, oh. But, you know, it's uh, my sort of thing is if you're not willing to say it to someone's face, don't write it in a comment on the Internet. Yeah, there's somebody about the manhole cover. I just thought it was a bit ridiculous, and it was just... It, I didn't think it looked like a digestive. I thought it looked like a manhole cover. The, the other, it's Danny Gold Dad Does Dinners. So if you want to go over there and give it a subscribe and a... Yeah, Mike Tyson said the internet was made for people to say things that wouldn't say face to face without getting punched for it. Yeah, very true. Yeah, he's a great guy, a great modeler. I mean, the skills he has and the things he's he's done on his lair, it's fantastic. And uh, I'm sure he'll be back. I think he just needs a bit of time. I know he's had a lot of family upset recently. There's been a lot of he lost his sister recently, I think, and there's been a couple of other deaths and that, and I think it's just got to him. And he just needs a break and needs to stop and take time and deal with things and, and get on, you know, move on. Hi, Anthony, Middleport Junction. How are you doing, sir? Hope you're keeping well. The London Transport 56, Doug. How are you doing? Yeah. 
Yeah, there's some, sometimes a lot of times these trolls can just be bots that come in and say things or whatever and just, you know, and it's just people, it, it's, it's not worth giving them the oxygen. Just delete them, move on. It really isn't because you're just wasting your time. It's, you're just shouting into the void. Just delete and move on. A few years ago, I had someone freaking out about me being able to cook a proper meal. <laughs> you know, lots of keyboard warrior stuff at the moment. Yeah, let's see if it's the same people, if it's the same accounts or whatever. But as I say, delete, move on. Life's too short. So robots in the motherboard base for eating cheetos at their computer. <laughs> yeah, going from what I said last week. I was like, <laughs> oh, Flymore's put up the link to my other channel. Yeah, if you wouldn't mind clicking on that and subscribing, guys, it'd be great. I'm already at about 130 subs, I think, which has surprised me. It's obviously cooking's a bigger niche than model railways because I've it took me a lot longer to get that when I done model railways and okay Clive take care mate um if you're at the next banger show in May do say hello it's a shame the trolls don't live under the <laughs> All right, what was your first train set? Um, first train set I had that I can remember was, at the time I didn't know, but thinking back on it now, it must have been O-Gage. It was a battery loco. Um, something probably like a... Uh, looked like a 47 or something, but I think it was more continental and it had two carriages with it and it was on an oval of orange plastic track. And that was the first train set I can remember having. And then my first loco I bought with my own money was a class 37 that I bought in Nobby's Hobbies in Bristol after I'd been working in a paper round for a few weeks because my parents moved from Donegal to Bristol and I was able to get a paper round and earn some money. And that was the first I went to Nobby's Hobbies. I, had, I think I had 15 pounds on me and I went in there to buy a local and I said, what have I got? And he had he split up this train set and he sold me the uh, 37 for 15 quid. And I just had that and an oval of track and an old Meccano controller that was actually off my dad's train set. <coughs> and that's where my double O gauge modeling really started. And then the next thing, one of my grandmother's friends had one of those, was it Freeman catalogs or whatever they were called, where you would pay like two quid a week. And I got the Flying Scotsman set and paid two, quiet, two quid a week for about 50 weeks or something. And then it grew from there. Hermitage Road. Oh, you're in Bristol, are you? Whereabouts in Bristol? North, south, east, west? Ironville, good evening. How are you doing? Raymond Legs, did I say hello to you? I can't remember if I did or not. <laughs> hello again, if I did. 
Kingswood. Oh, I know Kingswood. Yeah, I was around Patchway, Cribs Causeway, that area. We used to get the 75 down to Gloucester Road, down to Nobby's Hobbies. That was a great shop. It was just an Aladdin cave of modeling stuff. Oh, Anthony, you off again? All right, take care, mate. Catch you again. Having a trip to Bristol for the Ashley Dine station. Yeah. Yeah, is there, Simon, you'd probably be in there. Is there any update on the line out to Portis Head? It's been, they're going to open it, they're not going to open it, they're going to open it, they're not going to open it. They need to rebuild the station because the station they had there, they sold off the land and it's just a dead end of rail now. Okay, I wish to. I live in the times when you were a kid. Well, I was a kid in the 80s. Oh, gauge train set was a triang big train. Ah, oh, I'll have to look that up. Yeah, and I've got... Um, my dad had a triang train set, which was in the attic. Um, and I've still got the wagon and the brake van of that somewhere. Um, I don't know where the track, the track and the power controller, the mechano power controller of my first one that was used was at my mum's house and it's disappeared. I don't know where it's gone. It's probably got thrown out over the year. I used to work in Patchway for Rolls Royce. My grandfather worked there down Gypsy Patch Lane. He retired now. Oh, he must have retired out of there. Unfortunately, he's no longer with us, but he retired there in the 90s. Okay, I need to take care. Hopefully I'll catch you in your stream tomorrow evening. Who are my childhood train sets? Well, I suppose I could put something together. Latest in uh, planning application submitted, right? Okay. Yeah, the station building and toilet, and I'm sure it's been built on by somebody else now where you got to wonder how they do these things, how they build on land that was owned by the railway when there was still a line there and it was just sort of mothball. What's my favorite train from any country? Well, of course, I live in Donegal, and I'm chairman of the uh, Donegal Railway Heritage Center, or Donegal Railway Museum, as we're relabeling ourselves. Um, so it has to be, of course, the steam engine that I've helped get restored and back, old Drumbo, and the, the trains that used to run on the wee Donegal, the three-foot narrow gauge in the county. I put a lot of work into that over the fives five, six years. So, uh, yeah, that's probably my favorite. And, uh, you know, and if I go anywhere and there's a heritage railway with a steam train, I'm going to be there. Oh, 
You've got a video out today, it'd be great. Well, you're a mod if you want to stick a link to it up. Oh, yeah, Brian is, um, he sent me a picture of a box of people, what he's going to be doing while he's uh, <laughs> watching the stream, painting people. Yeah, it is a bit mind numbing. It's a waste of my eyes and green waves are just an excuse for fly tipping. Yeah. Well, if you're ever over this way, London Transport. You know, there's lots of flights into. Uh, I'm sure you can fly from Stansted to Derry, I think. Logan Air do that flight, I think. Stockford Barn Exhibition on this weekend, 13th and 14th. Painting people, that would be good for watching paint dry. <laughs> oh, Andy Dobson's in the house. Hi, Andy, how you doing? I just realized I'm not looking at all messages, so I might actually be missing some out. So, sorry, guys. Glasgow and Dublin flying to Denigo, Denigo International, yeah. Just going quickly back through the chat, see if there's anything I missed. Jason's going to allow people on tonight. We will be able to see what I've got planned for my live streams. Oh, okay. Your Rover Museum needs longer opening hours. It's open seven days a week this time of year. It's open from 10 to 5, Monday to Saturday, and 12 to 4 on Sundays. Yeah, we definitely need a railway up here. It's uh, completely vacant of railways. New video on Tuesday, we've only got six views. Well, um, one of my mods can put up Hermitage Road's video there. You can find it for me, please, guys. Oh, Peter, you're going to be at the NEC, are you? I'm going. Uh, I'm going to be there on Saturday and Sunday. Um, I believe I'm going to be doing a shift on the uh, Making Tracks Railway around, I think it's 11 to 2 on the Sunday. So I'm going to be operating it, which is uh, exciting and daunting at the same time. But uh, I'm looking forward to it. So if you see somebody in a red top, their tongue out the corner of their mouth with a controller in their hand trying to figure something out. That'll be me. Probably smoke coming out of my ears. As long as there's no smoke coming out of the train, we'll be fine. Hundred and twenty and twenty of trains that run on full mains or rectifier that use two. Ugh, you wouldn't want to touch that track. Oh, you're going to be there as well? Well, as I was saying, I'm going to be at the NEC both days. If you see me, tap me on the shoulder, say hello. Um, I'll be wandering around probably in a daze, looking at everything, not paying attention to anyone. And don't be offended if I can't remember your name, please, because I am terrible with names. You know, because I'll have this blank look on my face going, 
uh, my brain going, yeah, you should know this. Yeah, you should know that person's name. You've spoken to them before. In fact, you only spoke to them an hour ago and you can't remember their name, can you? <laughs> I don't work with you before. Yeah, well, that's it, Peter. I'll be like, I'll probably recognize you and go, oh, shit, I should know his name. Who is that? Oh, no, no. <laughs> if everybody could wear badges with their names on it, it'd be great. <laughs> what is the cheapest way to buy Irish model trains? The problem with Irish model trains is there isn't many people make them. There's Murphy's models. Um, Irish railway models, which is a cure scale. So at the moment, the current stuff that's coming out is probably just go to a cure scale and buy it off them. That's going to be the cheapest place because they really hold their value, the Irish models, because there's so few of them produced. They go, they can go for ridiculous money on eBay. Like um, they just redone a load of coaches, and I, I bought a load of old Mark Three and Mark Four coaches. I've been buying them over the years now. Anytime I've seen them at a show for a ten or something, I buy one to repaint them into a, a decent rake of Irish coaches. There we go. There's a link to Hermit Detroit. I think Digger's put up and um, Flame will put it up as well, I think. Yeah, sorry, that is a cab view. It's um, somewhere in Switzerland. I can't remember. I usually put a link at the top of the screen, but uh, it was one of those evenings where I was rushing around trying to get the live stream ready. Yeah, we are quite a friendly bunch in here, Hermit Detroit. It's, you know, it's great to have the same few people in here every week. We have a chat. People listen to me drone on and watch my few trains go around and derail and um, sometimes I actually try and do something on the live stream but the past couple of weeks it's just I've had nothing well there's obviously stuff I need to be doing but it's, it's the sort of thing that's easier to do when nobody's watching <laughs> and there isn't a the camera pointed at you oh Brian's in the house hi Brian how you doing Can you make an Irish steam locomotive? Um, there's, oh, Owen, who I got the um, pylons from. Well, that's over, must be over a year ago now. No, it's not a year because I made them in this house, didn't I? And I've been here well, almost a year now. Um, he was doing, he's been doing some great 3D design work. He's made a, a steam locomotive. I can't remember which one. He's also made cement bubbles and that that he's selling. So he's basically selling you the shell of the, the steam engine and then you put it on your own chassis. Oh, I'm good, Brian. Just chilling out here. Oh, peak stopped again. How long has that been stopped for? I put up a link. Um, I would have to try and find it, London Transport. Tell you what, if you can drop me an email, um, the email address is, uh, should be down below in the description or in my about section. Send me an email, I'll try and fish out the link and send it to you. I can't even remember what he's called on Facebook to tell you. Oh, where's my water gun? So don't forget to hit the like button for me, guys, and subscribe if you're new here, and pop any questions or comments you have in the chat there. And I'm just drinking water tonight. There's a layer in the UK called Carol Bag Double O Gauge, which is Irish Railways, lots of interest. All right, right, okay.
Nothing wrong with a bit of council pop. <laughs> Lintry Town, loads of models. Up to right filming local trains tomorrow, probably 800 and one sugar levels. Oh, you um, diabetic, are you, Lintry? I know all about that. My daughter is type one, thanks to COVID. Is there a bad doctor in the house? <laughs> That's 20 past eight, so um, Jason's on at um, half eight. Once I finish my stream, it will redirect you over there. <clears throat> oh, everything's derailing. The one thing with this controller is you have to remember the number of the loco because the one good thing about rail master was you just clicked on the picture but this one i've got to remember that the uh decoder number you do a video on the history of the denigo roy actually i will be doing that because i have to do a video for um people who come in and visit the museum so i'm sort of working on that in the background and it'll, it'll be a brief sort of 20 minute video that will give a brief history of County Senegal Railway, London Derry Lost Willie Railway, the GNR, all three railways who ran through Senegal, probably at 225 miles of narrow gauge, like 50 or 60 miles of um, standard gauge or broad gauge, five foot three gauge in Ireland. And uh, it's all gone. None of us left. So I'll be doing a video on that. It's one of those things that's on my to-do list, but uh, my to-do list just gets longer and not shorter. And I see I've got a brake pipe that's bent down on this 37, which is, I think, causing it to derail. Anna Foster McDade, what time do you finish? That's my daughter. And she should know what time I finish because I do the same thing every week, half seven to half eight. Have you ever modeled 009 gauge? Uh, 009, funny you should mention that. Oh, I can't actually reach it now, it's in my cabinet. But uh, if you look back at my videos from a couple of months ago, you'll see a little uh, 009 rail car, Donegal rail car. And there will be a loop of 009 on this layout. do list makes the list longer yeah nothing my, my list just gets longer it doesn't seem to ever get shorter does the museum have any track laid or have any land to put track on all i'm going to say to that graham is watch this space my wife has diabetes so ah oh, right okay <laughs> bloody kids <laughs> Yeah, it probably would be actually, London Transport. Oh, it was Brian off, is he? Or take care. Nothing to do here but watch paint dry. <laughs> TT track would be best, wouldn't it, for CDR? Um, I know, well, the CDR was three foot. So if you have 009, which is nine mil track, isn't it? So three mil would equal a foot. 
Is that right? So you'd be like having, so if it's double O, which is four foot, one foot to four mil. But then again, I'm not one of those modelers who has to be a rivet counter and have everything exact. A good appropriation is good enough for me. Oh, you're 15, are you? London Transport. Yeah, TT is 12 mil, not 9 mil. TT track would be 3 foot and double O. Nine mil is two foot three. From that, and I should buy some coaches. <laughs> Put a link up to your uh, website there, Brian. Send her in that direction. My birthday's next month. peak started running again I was stalled a minute ago uh, the peak is it's a 46 it's a backman one hi Alan how you doing mate I hope you're keeping well and ignoring all the trolls Um, I'll be at the NEC both days. Actually, on the Sunday there, I'm hoping to be one of the drivers of the Making Tracks layout. Hopefully. Well, see, last year my birthday was on a Thursday, but I did my live stream anyway because I was doing what I liked. It was my birthday. <laughs> Old Lord Isle is in the house. What's happening here? Do you see the uh, end of the month? There's the um, Key World Publishing show on at NEC to cover model ra 80%. It's going to be 80% model railways and then 20% other hobbies. The big making tracks layout is going to be there with a 200. And, I think he said now it's going to be 216 foot scenic section. Can you attend the base or are we on Saturday in the UK? No, oh, well, uh, I can't. <laughs> There's no way I could go over there. I'm limited to what I can go over into the UK because obviously it's time and expense. So I'm going to the NEC, which probably means I won't get to get this year. Model Rail Live, that's it. I couldn't think of the name. <laughs> I think Mark said he's busy. Can't be over at once. Yeah, actually, yeah, I have. I couldn't get over this weekend anyway because it's um, family confirmations this weekend. All right. Oh, it's 2029, so I'm going to start saying goodbye now and finish up, guys. So uh, thanks, everyone, for tuning in this week. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe if you're new here. Got a video out tomorrow morning on the three rail I was working on during the week there that I cleaned up and has got it running again. So you have to see a bit of that. So uh, thanks everyone for uh, tuning in. So I'm going to end the stream now shortly and it should take you straight over to Jason's stream. 
So I might see a few of you over there. So take care, everyone. And uh, I'm going to hit that old end stream now, guys. And I'll catch you next Thursday or in the other live stream. So take care, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. And uh, I'll see you all soon.